Christ is risen indeed. And that is why we are here today and I would like you to tell your family members Christ is risen indeed. Uh, just tell them that with joy, celebration indeed. This is victory. This is triumph. Christ is risen indeed. And we celebrate this moment in time. We have taken time to share in the Lord's table and I believe that even that experience, God is working in your life. In fact, the Lord's table is about Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and Jesus' resurrection. This is the redemption story. We want to celebrate all of you who are connecting with us from all over the globe. And we believe that as this word comes to you, that faith will be ignited in your spirit. That a hope will rise again. Because resurrection is about hope. Resurrection is faith becoming a reality. Resurrection is about Jesus Christ. Resurrection is the redemption story becoming experiential in our lives. Today the scripture we are reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 22. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Three things that I want to remind us about Christ. Number one, the reason. Number two, the reality. Number three, the result. Let me start with the reason. Why did Christ rise from the dead? And the reason for that is simply this, to authenticate redemption. Jesus rose from the dead to authenticate redemption. To say that redemption was not a hoax. Redemption was not a just a byword. Redemption was a reality. That God had accepted the sin. That God had accepted the sacrifice that was made for our sin. But secondly, the reality. The reality was this, to actualize redemption. Indeed, just like Job said, my Redeemer lives. And he is the gift of eternal life to you and me. He is the, he's the one who has come and he's the one who said in John 10.10, 10, I came that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. But thirdly, there's a result. You see, there's a reason. There's a reality and there's a result. And the result is simply this. We can now advocate for redemption. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that the, res the result is simply this. The gospel must be declared. We have a reason. We have a reality. We have a result. We must advocate for redemption. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's declare. May this be your reality. May you have a reason for redemption. May you have a reality in your redemption. May the result be there that you will tell everybody wherever you go that this Christ, the answer for the world, is risen from the dead. Have you heard what the Lord